Hi everyone, this is Wendy with your 10 plus for today. 1 Corinthians 13 is a pretty well-known scripture in the Bible. It's often called the love chapter and it's often at weddings. Maybe you've been to one and you've heard it. Towards the end of the chapter, there are some passages that aren't really talked about much. And so a couple years ago when I was reading through it, I found them and they made an impact on me. So I wanted to share them with you today. So after all the love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, does not boast. If you go towards the end, the last verse in the Bible, it says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Part of this verse is very future oriented. It's talking about our time when we get to heaven. So it's saying for now, we only see reflection. We don't see the whole picture right now. Then when we get to heaven, we'll see face to face. We'll see Jesus face to face. Now I know in part, our knowledge can only be partial because we are not God. We don't have God's thoughts. Then I shall know fully. So at that time, we're going to know everything that God knows. Then it says, even as I am fully known. So the first part talked about when we're in heaven, but even as I am fully known talks about now, this moment. Many of us struggle throughout our lives to be known. And I think it's a human desire to be known, to have someone see us for who we really are. Sometimes we don't even know who we really are. Maybe because of youth, we haven't figured out parts of ourselves yet. Maybe because it's just life that we're always trying to figure ourselves out and understand us better. Who we are in this moment though, is fully known. We may not fully know ourselves. Other people certainly don't know us fully, but in the present, we are fully known and we have been known since before we were born. Jeremiah 1.5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. So before the beginning of time, we were already known. That need to be known is fulfilled in Jesus. You are exactly who he planned you to be. Whatever your characteristics, whether you're outgoing, whether you're shy, whether you're studious, whether you're athletic, whether you're a combination of all that, whatever it is, you are exactly who God created you to be. And we are all on a mission to discover that. And as we work to discover that, very often we hear from other people about who they think we are. Parents, based on knowing us since we were little ones, have ideas of who we are. Friends have ideas of who we are. And sometimes non-friends have ideas of who you, we are. And sometimes those are nice to hear and sometimes they feel like judgments. And very often they're based on that person's perception. For example, a while, a long time ago, I was told by one person, you really need to get more structured, you need to get more organized, you need to get in more control of your life. Somebody else tells me, you're too tightly wound, you need to loosen up, you need to be more relaxed. What do you do with that? Am I too organized? Am I not organized enough? Everybody can have their opinion, but the fact is, I am who I am. God has made me that way. And as I learn that, we, I can learn to celebrate that. And I wish that for you also. But even if we don't know, and even if the other people don't know, God knows. And he takes us on that journey to discover ourselves. And while we grow and mature and learn more about ourselves, God tells us who we actually are. 1 John 3, 1, A says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. John 1, 12 says, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. Ephesians 1, 4, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless, blameless in his sight. Galatians 4, 7, so you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And, the, and since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. 2 Corinthians 6, 18, And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 1 Peter 2, 9, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. This is who we are. We are his children. We are his sons and daughters. When we struggle with who we are, when we struggle with what people say to us, when we struggle with um, good or, or negative feedback, we can come back to this fact that we are God's children. We are his chosen people. We are his royal priesthood. I made this list because I'm a list person. It's something about me. And if you wanted to keep a copy of this, I thought you could just take a picture right here, 
I don't know if it turns up backwards. Maybe it does, because one of the things about me is I'm not tech savvy. Um, so if you want it, I can provide it to you. Just let me know. So remember that you are God's chosen people. Now your plus today is I want you to write down at the top of a piece of paper who I am. And I want you to write down some of the things we talked about today. You're a child of God. You're holy and blameless. God's child. You're an heir. You're sons and daughters. You are chosen. You are royal. You are God's special possession. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the identity we have in you. Thank you for your great love for us that you sacrifice so much to bring us to be your children. I pray for each person listening, Lord, that they would know that they also belong to you and they are yours. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye. See you later.